Peace and greetings everyone, I'm Jahi Farr, and I'm creating this video to speak about the importance of eating, the correct way of eating, what to include and what not to include in your daily diet. And what I'll be talking about is nothing new. Uh, this information was used by our ancestors of all cultures in order to maintain longevity and that of health. Okay, I will uh, conduct this video uh, or explain this video using three topics. The first topic will be that of food combining. The second topic will be that of drinking while eating. And the third and final topic will be that of uh, food and emotions. Okay, so to jump right into it, we're getting to the first topic, which is that of food combining. And as I stated before, there's a lot of information out there in regards to food combining, but a lot of the information can be very misleading. And also you'll find um, where there's one set of compatible information and seems like very healthy information, you'll, you can also find some different information in regards to the same topic of food combining. So I hope to clear up the correct way of combining food and try to take away some of the myths that are out there in the world. Um, so with that, I guess the simplest way to combine food is, number one, is to eat fruits by themselves. If you have to mix fruit, then mix fruits that taste the same. For example, mix sweet fruits with sweet fruits, sour fruits with sour fruits, and eat melons by those by themselves. Okay. The second thing is that of um, starches. You have the whole grains, you have uh, the beans, and then you have starchy vegetables. This is a good combination and can be eaten together. Okay. So again, the whole grains, the beans, the starchy vegetables. The next category is that of oils and fats. You can eat those with vegetables. That is a good combination as well. The fourth and final category to remember is that of complex proteins. For most people it's nuts and seeds and then for the people out there who still eat meats it's nuts, seeds, maybe meats and you can mix those with, with vegetables. So just to recap real fast, fruits Number one category, eat those by themselves. If you have to mix them, make sure mix them. You make sure they taste the same. Never mix melons with anything. Eat melons by themselves. The second category is that of um, starches. Eat vegetables, beans, and whole grains together. That's a good combination. The third category is that of oils and fats. You can eat those with vegetables. That's a very good combination. The fourth and final category is that of complex proteins. You can eat animal meat, nuts and seeds with vegetables. They are very good combinations that will not require uh, the body to go into a stage of uh, fermentation, rancid, um, uh, production or that of putrefaction. Okay, uh, the science behind that really fast is this: the body creates uh, specific enzymes, and these enzymes uh, make the intestines, the small intestines in particular, uh, it makes the small intestines become uh, either alkaline or acid, depending on the food you're eating. So. If I'm eating fruits, then my intestines will produce a substance called amylase 1, okay, the first type of amylase. And this enzyme will help the fruits to break down and then pass out of the system, okay. And it creates an alkaline environment within the intestines. The second amylase breaks down the starchy vegetables, the whole grains, and the beans, okay. This creates a, a minute acidic environment. Now, if I mix the fruit, which is an alkaline substance, with that of an, a minute acidic substance, then the intestines is no longer 
uh, has the compatible environment in order to break down any either food so the fruits and the starchy uh, foods will begin to ferment in the intestines again because the body or the intestines in particular has to have a very specific environment in order to break down the specific food okay moving to the next enzyme which is lipase and lipase breaks down oils fats and also vegetables and this makes the environment um, it makes it medium acidic okay so it's like a, a medium type of acidity again if you mix fruits with that that's going to make the intestines uh, non-compatible to break down fruits oil or the oils within the intestines very important to note that the intestines have to have a specific uh, alkaline or acid environment in order to break down down the certain food that you're eating the same thing occurs for complex proteins. If you're eating a complex protein, then the body will produce an enzyme known as protease. And protease will produce a very highly acidic uh, environment in the intestines to break down the protein. Again, if you mix fruits or oils or that of starches with the protein, then the enzymes uh, uh, will become incompatible to break down any either food and thus the proteins will putrefy the fruits will ferment and the fats will go rancid in the intestines okay and that's where that wonderful uh, <laughs> that wonderful aroma comes from when we pass gas uh, it comes from that putrefication or rancidity or uh, fermentation that, occur, that, that, that occurs within intestines and that's where the farting comes from or the gas comes from okay that's very very important to know because um, a specific environment is needed in order to break down the specific type of food okay very very important I think another scenario that will help us to better understand the food combining uh, uh, practice or procedure is that of a security officer in that of a checkpoint okay so just bear with me for a minute imagine if we had uh, a, a checkpoint and a security officer that was checking the vehicles that passed through uh, the checkpoint so the first car that passed through is that of a sports car right he checked the sports car. It may have taken him about 45, uh, half an hour to 45 minutes to check the sports car to make sure that it was okay. Okay, and the sports car can be likened to that of fruit. So within 45, half an hour to 45 minutes, fruit has been digested and passed out of the system and is gone out of the checkpoint now. So the officer is now gone on to the next vehicle. And this vehicle is that of a van, maybe a six to eight passenger van. So the officer checks this van and it takes him roughly an hour to an hour and a half to check this van. Now the van is analogous to that of the starchy vegetables, the beans, and the whole grains. And it may have taken them again an hour and a half, an hour or an hour and a half to check the van and then the van passes out of the checkpoint. The third uh, vehicle that comes through the checkpoint is that of, uh, let's say, a 16-passenger van or Winnebago or something like that. So the officer checks this particular vehicle, and it takes them roughly uh, two hours to two hours and a half to check it. After he finished, it's gone out of the, the checkpoint. The fourth and final vehicle that comes through is that of a tractor trailer. A tractor trailer, okay? It, it takes the officer roughly three and a half to four hours to check the entire tractor trailer and that tractor trailer is analogous to the proteins again after four or to the four to four and a half hours the tractor trailer is gone out of the checkpoint now notice if I put the sports car in back of the tractor trailer instead of the sports car taking the initial 15 uh, the initial 30 to 45 minutes to get out of the checkpoint, it now takes uh, roughly five hours or five and a half hours to pass through the checkpoint. And thus the fruit will take roughly 
five hours to pass out of the digestive system, thus causing putrefaction and uh, any of the other illnesses that may come along with putrefaction, such as irritable bowel syndrome, colitis, acid reflux disease, disease etc., etc. Okay, very, very important for us to note that because the way we eat and the combinations that we put together will cause a lot of the diseases that a lot of people are suffering from today. Okay, so that concludes food combining. The second topic is that of um, drinking while eating. And I have to say that we should not be drinking anything while eating. Again, going back to the environment that's needed in the um, small intestines, when we drink water or juice or soda, that causes the environment within the intestines to go out of whack. And then it's now not compatible uh, to the food that we're eating, and thus the food will begin to either putrefy, go rancid, or ferment. So never drink while eating. And if you are some of the people out there who have to drink something, then it's best to maybe sip on four ounces of, of water or ginger root tea. Uh, research shows that four ounces of liquids while eating will not totally uh, impact the, uh, the alkaline and acidic environment of the, the, the body. However, if you drink over that four ounces, or if you drink the four ounces too fast, that will have a negative impact on the alkaline and acidic environment within the intestines. So four ounces is roughly, this is probably about eight or nine ounce glass right here. Four ounces will pretty much be almost half that. So you want to drink four ounces of either water or tea if you have to, okay? Very important. The third and final topic is that of the emotions while eating. It's very important not to be angered, not to be depressed, and not to be uh, sad before eating food. Okay. Again, if you if you're in in if you're in either of those states before eating then your body won't be able to properly produce the enzymes necessary to set up their appropriate uh, environment within the intestine. So it's very important that you're not, again, angered, saddened, or feeling depressed before eating. This is another reason for prayer or meditation before eating food, because it allows your body to adjust and get ready for uh, consumption of nutrients, okay? So in addition to praising the Creator, we also allow our bodies to get ready to get out of an anger state, an anxious state, or a fearful state and get into a state uh, of preparation for eating food. So it's very, very important. Uh, I hope that the information that I shared in this video was helpful. I understand that things or habits don't change overnight, but if we can take this information and apply it uh, to our life at least once or twice a week, then we'll have better results. We won't be suffering from foggy-mindedness, <laughs> which is a result of the intestines being uh, um, backed up. We won't suffer from acid reflux disease where we have that burning sensation in our chest. We won't suffer from um, that wonderful fragrance that continues to come out of our anus <laughs> uh, because we're backed up uh, or we're going through a stage of fermentation with uh, so much food or so much fruits and vegetables being backed up inside of our intestines because we combine them with, with meat or nuts or seeds or things of that nature. Okay. Uh, I believe that that's it uh, for this one. I hope that, again, I hope that the information was helpful. Like always, all questions, comments, concerns are welcome. Thank you for your time. Have a great day. Bye.